Hi guys, welcome to a new video. First of all, thank you so much for your constructive feedback on my last video. I want to make sure that the volume of background music is appropriate from now on. Today's topic is all about the strict hierarchy rules that must be followed among the members of Japanese idol group Morning Musume. There are some crazy ones, especially from their early days in the business. So grab a snack and stay tuned. In Japan, it's very common that there is a hierarchy between Kohai, so the junior, and Senpai, the senior, that must be followed. So the Kohai would always want to make sure to be polite and respectful with their senpai. In a group like Morning Musume, where younger members join regularly, it is normal that this hierarchy is applied. However, Morning Musume is known to be a special case where rules are a little more extreme than in other idol groups. Before we jump into those rules specifically, I would like to travel back in time with you guys to the origin story of the group, because it gives a few more insights of why the rules were so extreme. In the casting show in 1997, it was searched for a female singer. Tsunku then decided that members that didn't make it in the contest should become a new group if they are able to sell 50,000 CDs in only 5 days. The five members really made it and became Morning Musume. At that time, there was a huge pressure on the members. They fought so hard to reach the goal and then suddenly new members were added. Old generation members said that they felt hurt by that because they wondered if they wouldn't be good enough. That's why first generation members started to treat the younger members poorly back then and huge rivalry started between the older and newer members. Mari Yaguchi, for example, said that her stress was so severe at the time that she banged her head against the sink as soon as she got home because she couldn't handle the pressure. Also, there has been a lot of jealousy between the members. The first generation members had the feeling that the management was biased towards certain members like Abe Natsumi, who allegedly would have better positions on their CD covers and more screen times in general. I don't want to blame the members of the older generation because it really must have been an incredible hard time. Yet it explains why the old generation enforced respect on the younger members as well as between them by adding rules that might sound really crazy. So let's jump into those rules. Members were not allowed to have the same hairstyle, a rule that was created so that the members would memorize each other's name and be able to recognize each other from a distance fast. Even if a Kohai member already did their hair, the senior's choice of hairstyle would have priority, always. So if a member wanted to wear pigtails and was already finished with their hair and a senior would decide on wanting to wear pigtails, the Kohai must change the hairstyle. Yaguchi said in a recent talk show, now that I think about it, it's super scary. She also revealed the story of how her ribbon size got bigger and bigger because she was afraid of wearing the same ribbon as Nozomi Tsuji. Even the current generation members admitted that this rule is still in place and that it is definitely hard to follow. It is not only on stage that seniors are given priority, but according to Fujimoto Miki, there is a rule that seniors are the first to choose their lunchboxes. Fujimoto, who seemed to be less particular about her hairstyle, talked about it as if it was just a matter of personal preference. But she passionately said that for a teenage in the prime of her eating years, the rules for not being able to touch the lunchbox until the senior picked it was tough. Inside, she felt annoyed and said, hurry up and get your lunch. I'm hungry. I didn't know it, so I was waiting for the members to sit. Then, Yuu-chan came in and I was waiting for the members to sit. I thought, what? I thought this was a bad guy. Gotomaki recently revealed that in her time in Morning Musume, senpais had their preferred car seats when driving to locations and such. When she newly joined the group, she wasn't aware of it and waited in the front seat for her members. When Nakazawa approached the car, she stared at her angrily until Gotomaki switched seats and went to the back of the car. That was a very scary experience for Goto at that time. There were also some rules that the girls agreed with, such as being late is absolutely forbidden. The rule is, 
If you're even a minute late, look each person in the eye and apologize. Recently, former Morning Musume member Gotomaki filmed a YouTube video with AKB48 member Kashiwagi Yuki. When Kashiwagi asked her about any special rules within the group, Goto said, During my time in Morning Musume, there were some unusual rules, such as never leaving bananas in the dressing room. The reason for this was that Yuko Nakazawa hated bananas, so just having bananas in the dressing room was a problem. Because of this, the other members of the group would leave the dressing room and secretly ate bananas in the hallway. In addition, there was a rule that no one was allowed to walk in front of Nakazawa, and when getting on and off the elevator, Nakazawa was the first one to get on and the first one to get off. So other members had a hard time making a U-turn in the elevator. When asked who was the strictest, Nakazawa's name was always mentioned by the members. Nozomi Tsuji also talked about their relationship during her time with Morning Musume in the variety show Gekkai TV Sukato Japan in 2004. She said, Nakazawa was really scary and she was like a senior in junior high school. It is important to add, however, that a lot of members do respect and love Nakazawa-san today. As you can see, the hierarchy in Morning Musume was very strict and still is today. It's also received a lot of criticism in Japan. Especially Nakazawa's crazy rules are haunting her until today and she was openly criticized for them. In a talk show in 2006, Nakazawa talked about her own behavior at that time, admitting she was a really bad person back then. Mari Yaguchi and Yasta K, who supported the group in the early days as well as a second generation member, reflected on the situation and openly apologized, saying it's our fault and we're making it hard for the current members. I think that it must have been really hard back then for the members and I feel sorry for them. However, I think it's brave that the old generation members openly apologized, admitting that their behavior was too much a lot of the time. What do you think about those rules? We've already reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Is there anything you'd like me to cover next? Let me know. Bye!